What's up everyone? So today I'm just going to go over some of the tips um, regarding Anki uh, that are particularly relevant to the USMLE when you're studying for it. Because um, of course a lot of people do Anki before the dedicated, but I also found that doing Anki during dedicated was an entirely different ballgame and required you to kind of change the way you were approaching it a bit. So I just want to go ahead and talk a bit about you know how I approached it. So my background is, first of all, Anki is very important to remember key concepts. For those of you who don't know Anki, I have an entire playlist that I'll link right up there, but go ahead and watch that. But yes, just because we all know that doesn't mean that everyone uses it. But the point is you should use it because during dedicated is the time when you will need Anki a lot because every time you get a question wrong, you should try to make a flashcard for it. And the reason I say this is because a lot of people think, oh, I got a question wrong. I'll read over the answers and, you know, I'll be fine next time. That's not true. At least for me, I was baffled by the number of different ways the USMLE asked questions. And I would get a question wrong multiple times unless I made a specific Anki card going over the concept that was wrong. And so I realized pretty early on that I needed to make a Anki card that, you know, reminded me of most questions when I got them wrong, especially if they represented a big gap in my knowledge. So I would use your world question. I would use Amboss. Anytime I got an Amboss question wrong, I would screenshot it and I would make sure I remembered it and then make an Anki card for it. Same with the MBMEs. The MBMEs that are online, there's so many good questions in there uh, that you can make sure you refer back to and don't, you know, lose sight of. So I made MBME cards and I also made um, cards based on Pathoma when I went through it the second time around. I tried to keep each of the cards very limited. So for like a UWorld question, I would try to limit it to like at least, at most, two to three cards for a question. So I don't like go overload. Same with the MBMEs. Like if I got a question wrong, I would like make a card related to that question. And at most, I'd usually do one or two for an MBME because MBMEs were much more superficial. A U world was much more deep and intense. Uh, so Anki was a great way to solidify my concepts. And I realized when I made my own cards about questions I got wrong, I would remember them much more than if I just stuck to pre-made cards, which I was using. So with all that being said, here's what I personally went into dedicated with. I had about 15,000 pre-made cards plus my own cards that are kind of circulating between. Uh, and during dedicated, I added about 10,000 new cards, uh, either my own that I made or also just um, pre-made cards from the Zonky deck or something like that. Uh, the other thing that was super clutch that you all should do is at the start of your dedicated, you should change the max interval for your um, reviews to be from six months because I think that's the default to one month. And what that means is every card that's in your deck the most time that you'll spend between seeing it the first time and seeing it a second time is one month. So by this, you minimize like the fact that you might see a card and then not see it before you take the test. By moving that interval down to one month, I was able to see like all of my cards at a much higher frequency and a much higher turnover. So I could make sure a lot of those facts were in my head. So that was actually a very clutch tip that I thought was helpful. Uh, and I also changed that interval to even shorter. I made it 21 days with one week remaining because then I just wanted to, at that point, I was just trying to see as much as possible and make sure I had enough in my head to kind of reiterate uh, the information. So early on, what that led to was about 800 reviews every day with about 50 new cards that I was adding on early in my dedicated period. Because as I said, early on, I knew so little that I was adding on a lot of cards. So I mean, in a week, I would add maybe 300 to 400 cards. Um, and at the end of the dedicated period, I would end up having fewer new cards, but many more reviews. Because as I said, I, I decreased the interval and I would also just have way more reviews because I added so many cards from the weeks prior. So at that point, I had to figure out how I could spend at most three hours because I didn't want to spend any more than three hours doing Anki. And I actually ended up cutting down to about two and a two to two and a half hours a day on Anki. And I'll show you the main tip that I use to decrease my Anki time during dedicated period. Okay, so welcome to my Anki. Please do not get overwhelmed. I know there's a lot going on here, and I told you I'm not particularly organized, but it works in my head. So I'll walk you through it, okay? Here's my main deck that I use. This is my main deck. This is clerkship material, not relevant. This is my step two material that I've kind of gotten started on, and here's my sub eye material, which is right here. The stuff that is in my USMLE step one is the preclinical. So let's go into that. And with the preclinical, let's now go into my master sketchy, because that's actually where I put most of my step one stuff. Um, but before we get into the master sketchy, I do want you to see that I also created some sub decks here uh, for Pathoma. And so notice that when I went through Pathoma, I had some cards on the breast chapter, female genitalia, hemostasis, male genitalia, neurology, vasculitis. I had all of that stuff. And now within the master sketchy, this is actually where I had a mix of pre-made cards and also my own cards. And also note how I made a bunch of decks for MBME 20, MBME 21, 22, 24. So every MBME I made, I made into like a deck of cards that I would review. 
uh, given that I went through the MBME. I only came to this realization early on, late, a bit later. So like the first few MBMEs I did, I think I just like added them to this deck without making a separate sub deck for them. And then notice how I cr like created um, a week for each of my studying. So notice how I told you I had eight weeks of studying and then my test was actually the third day of the ninth week. So I had, um, you know, cards in each of those weeks based on which ones I made and how many I added on. And notice how I added on about like 500 a week almost. Um, the tip that I want to share with you all is I told you that I'd have about 800 cards a day. If you have 800 review cards in one deck, so if you had 800 review cards just in one deck, getting through those review cards will take you a really long time. But the way you can make it faster is to break those 800 cards up into eight decks of 100 cards each. And the reason for that is when you break up 800 cards, you decrease the um, amount of cards that you'll have in the review queue. And so you can actually get through them much faster. So that's exactly what I did. Notice how in this Master Sketchy deck, you know, there's a lot of cards. There's at least 16,000. And within those 16,000, note how I broke each of them up and I just like randomly distributed like 1,000 into like smaller decks. So like this deck has 551, this deck has 400, this deck has 1,000, this deck has 900. But the point is I broke each of my massive, massive deck into many smaller decks. And then during the morning when I would do my Anki, I would just go to each deck and knock out one deck at a time. And what this did is exactly what I mentioned earlier. If I had a thousand cards in one day, I wouldn't have to do all those 1,000 in one deck. I would have to do 10 sets of about 100. And 10 sets of 100 goes much faster than one set of a thousand. And if you do Anki regularly, you'll know exactly what I mean. Because if you're doing one big deck, you have so many reviews that will keep getting added on and on and on and on and on over like 10 minutes and you'll have to go back to them and then you're like, you know, it just takes a lot longer as opposed to when you have a smaller deck, you can actually get through it much faster and the reviews that you see, you'll see them once and then they'll be gone. Um, so point being, if you're going to approach Anki during Dedicated and you're going to try to do a lot of it, it's much better to break it up into smaller decks that have fewer cars, but you have to do more of those decks than to have one big deck that's to ha that has like a lot of cars because that takes a lot of time. And so as I mentioned to you, I would try to minimize everything. So I, at this point, I broke it down by week. So even when I was studying week three, week four, week five, I broke it all down by sub deck because I wanted to keep the amount minimal in each deck. I didn't want to have like one deck that ever had like 50,000 cards. I wanted to have one deck that had a thousand and then I would just kind of work at it and go through this whole thing um, every, every week. And I agree with you, like it was annoying at times because <laughs> I told you, you'd have to go through this sub deck and this sub deck and this sub deck and this sub deck. But it made it much faster to go through 1,100 cards. I was able to get through them in two to two and a half hours as opposed to like trying to get through like 1,200 cards in one big deck because that really takes much, much, much longer. And I will tell you right now, I actually did empirical like evidence-based like onkying on my own and I was like, damn, this saves so much time. And so that would be my one tip for you to break up your studying algorithmically or even by like subject material. But notice how I have like Pathoma here and I made Pathoma based decks. And notice how these decks were based, were separated entirely on time and I broke them up that way. You can do either or, but the point is try to minimize the amount of cards you try to do at once. Try to keep everything nice and consolidated so you can do like a hundred cards and then move on to the next hundred and the next hundred as opposed to doing like 400 in a row in one deck. So with all that being said, please let me know if you have any more questions, but this is kind of how I structured my Ankiing during uh, Dedicated. Um, I will try to answer more specific questions and we'll go from there. But thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. See you in the next video. Hope you guys find these helpful. Uh, and if you do, share these videos with a friend. And let's see if we can, you know, increase everyone's study productivity. Cool. Thanks for watching. Peace.